What's up guys? Back, been around the world. Uh, scaling wad of the day, Amanda. It's a benchmark workout. Uh, it's actually the only benchmark workout that was named, or has been named after a CrossFit uh, Games competitor. She died uh, prematurely uh, of cancer. Um, so in her honor, this uh, workout was created for snatch and muscle up. I love this workout for one main reason. Not a lot of people can do it. Uh, I believe these two movements are the hardest movements that CrossFit has in the weightlifting domain and in the gymnastic domain. Um, these are the crux of most uh, CrossFit uh, athletes' abilities, right? These things come up at the higher regional and CrossFit games for a reason. Not many people can do it. It was first introduced uh, in the 2010 CrossFit Games, and again this year during regionals. Go figure, right? Go figure. It's very low volume, 975, nine snatches, nine muscle ups, seven snatches, seven, five, five time. All right, seems pretty fast, uh, but you'd be surprised. So, uh, as we set this up, right, level three athlete, cream of the crop, uh, two and level one. Remember these lines uh, are relative, but they're a gauge for me to kind of kind of set where my athletes are at, all right? This is ever changing uh, depending on the athlete's skills, uh, their proficiency, and uh, their strength gains, their uh, metabolic gains, and so forth. But it's something to get us thinking. So level three athlete is doing this RX, right, prescribed. The standard for the snatch is what we would call a touch and go. Where the bar is set up on the ground, I set up, I snatch it, uh, and drop and catch it in the bottom of the overhead squat position in one smooth movement. You can't, uh, you can't bring it up to the hang position, power snatch it, and then squat. That is not allowed. Uh, not for this workout. It's a touch and go, which makes that snatch really difficult, especially when you're really, really tired. Uh, in the muscle up, the... The most difficult part of the muscle up uh, for the standard is uh, two, obviously if you're struggling with that transition and the false grip and holding that false grip. Uh, and the second is at the bottom of each muscle up, you have to externally rotate your shoulders, all right? They have to see this occur. And if it doesn't occur, then it's a no rep, it doesn't count. So that's one thing to take in consideration. It's one thing to be doing your muscle ups from here. It's another thing to be learning how to externally rotate and then try back through again. Some people are moving into uh, a non-false grip position. I've seen a lot of athletes do that lately. Uh, and it's okay, just know it's the force having to, uh, to produce in that uh, non-false grip position is a lot higher than the false grip position. Okay, so take that into consideration. It's not as hard to maintain that bottom position, elbow locked out in a non-false grip, uh, but it's going to be harder over time with higher repetitions to connect those as well. Touch and go, and we'll say external rotation. At the bottom. Level two athlete, right? One of the things we know is that uh, level two athletes are probably struggling with that full range squat snatch. So the best modification uh, that I use here uh, is either, uh, excuse me, a power snatch or a hang power snatch. All right, it depends for me I choose that depending on where the athlete's weakness and strength is. Okay, so uh, the hardest part of the squat snatch is having to travel all that distance from that deadlift position, catching it all the way back again in the bottom of the overhead squat. The power snatch is easier to teach, so maybe you modify that. Uh, a workout like this, I would not modify the volume because it's already really, really low. So I would try to keep the volume. Remember this conversation of load versus volume and what the pros and cons to each of those are. Take that into consideration. Keeping the volume the same, uh, I, would, I would moderate the load a little bit. But remember, if I'm changing this to the power snatch, they might be strong enough to power snatch that, right? Sometimes uh, it's not an inability of strength that's hindering them from getting that. 
it's a technical deficiency. It's a, it's a neurological deficiency in accuracy, coordination, uh, and so forth. So take that consideration. Or we go to the hang power snatch. Maybe uh, uh, they, they move through the bottom really nicely and that bar travel remains over their midfoot, but they're having a struggle catching it, right? Catching it in the bottom of the catch position in the, uh, in the bottom of the overhead squat. So maybe I move that workout to a hang power snatch for them so they can work on that neurological efficiency when they're tired to catch that load. Uh, in a squat snatch position. You, got, you, you have to decide that for your athletes. And the muscle ups uh, is very difficult as well. Level two athletes in between, you know, they can hit a couple muscle ups, but maybe not for a workout. So the modification is three to four pull ups and three to four ring dips per muscle up prescribed. So uh, for level two, let's say four times three, what's that, 36 uh, pull ups and 36 ring dips, all right? That's the modification for that muscle up. Three to four pull ups and three to four uh, ring dips per muscle up prescribed. So 36 and then do the math. Seven times four is 28 pull ups, 28 ring dips, and so forth. All right, that's how I'd probably modify a level two athlete. I would take those two uh, modifications in consideration. Level one athlete is probably uh, still really just working on that snatch. It's very new to them. Someone like them, you're trying to work on the speed versus the power of that barbell. Uh, level one athletes kind of perceive that movement as a, uh, as a strength, kind of this whipping here versus this fluid speed, right? And reversing, teaching the concept of, hey, let's, teach you how to reverse underneath the bar. Hey, I need you to drive that bar as high as you can, hands as high as possible, and learn how to reverse underneath the bar before gravity uh, beats you, right? That's kind of the, the description I give to a level one athlete who is still learning this. So they probably don't have much of that, or they do, but maybe just bar work uh, or light loads, all right? So for someone like them, I would probably work overhead squat into that workout. So instead of the snatch, we just do the overhead squat, right? I set it from the rack position maybe, put it on their back, reset your hands wide, wide, push, press it out, and go to the overhead squat from there. That's probably how I'd make that modification. Uh, maybe handle, see if they can work up that load, right? Because the volume's so low, let's try to get some load on there. And for the muscle up, that, that same modification that we use for level two athletes, the only difference here is they probably, probably can't handle ring dips as well. So we move to static dips static dips instead. One of the things I want to take into consideration is that for warm-up for stuff like this, I'm working barbell movements and um, muscle-up transitions, uh, overhead mobility, anything to get them warmed up. My warm-up is predicated on the workout. Mobility is predicated, uh, or mobility is set for performance. I want enough mobility to help me perform better, okay? And so if, if it's snatch muscle up today, hey, I need to work some stuff like their thoracic mobility. I need to work up some sh overhead stuff. Uh, I need to work on some coordination issues with that bar. I might go through uh, the Bergner warm-up series for the snatch or the USAW warm-up series for the snatch, something that's going to get the CNS firing, and that's super, super important, super, super important. So in traditional PT, how would I set this up, all right? One of the things I know is that, uh, uh, what is that, 24 reps, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 21 reps, something like that. Anyways, uh, one of the things I can do is, is set up uh, an A setup where I'm just going seven sets of three on this snatch, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 21 reps there, right? 21 reps. And we rest. Rest two to three minutes. All right, this is a, what I would set for a traditional personal training session or for those who are personal trainers who are trying to figure out how they would mold something like this uh, for their clients, a one-on-one -on -one client. A1, let's work on that snatch. 
Let's meet them where they're at. Like we talked about earlier, if that client is at a level two where they need to work on some power snatches or some uh, hang power snatches, or excuse me, hang squat snatch. Excuse me. It's not a power snatch, it's a squat snatch. Uh, then that's what we do here. If they can handle three squat snatches in a row uh, with some load to do that. Remember, we're continuing trying to incrementally add load. So this might even get higher than that. And that's, that's cool. That's a good thing. It's what's your purpose, what's your goal in mind with that workout. And uh, a B1, right, if they're a higher level, maybe we go uh, max muscle up without, with, without falling off the ring. Once you fall off the ring, maybe you go to... Uh, B2, or excuse me, hold it there and rest as needed. Five sets, five times, something like that. Or if they're not at that level, we move them to this prescription here where we're going uh, five by ten pull ups. That's A1 or B1. And D2, 5 by 10 dips or ring. Again, it's dependent on the athlete, where they're at. Hey, this is the gold standard. This is where we want you. These are your modifications. These, uh, these are ways to scale for that workout. And maybe we rest in between. So now we got our snatches and we still got that. Mimics that. Remember, we always want to be here in the te intensities, independent variable. Most commonly associated with optimizing return. More bang for your buck is going to get us there. Knowing and understanding that if I can't get there, that I understand the concept of intensity, but I'm just not there, we got to, uh, we got to slow this down a little bit. And we're going to find their needs and where they're at, knowing that I someday want to be there and I want to be doing that, producing that. Uh, world record times are at three minutes, I believe, something of that nature. 3.30, 2.30 to 3.30. Uh, in that domain for that workout. It's fast, it's explosive, it's powerful. Alright guys, see you later. Bye.